Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so now we are uh, discussing uh, we are uh, starting discussion of monopolistically competitive market okay so let us first try to understand by monopolistically competitive market what we are referring in so we told what is the monopolistically competitive market basically different markets let me repeat again it is there in your book okay so let me repeat again you are asking okay how many producers are there if the answer is one market is monopoly type. If answer is few, few means uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 like that. Okay. So, few then answer is the market is oligopoly type of market. Okay. When the answer is many means how many producer, many producer are there, then you have to ask another question, second layer of question. What is that? The product what they are selling, is it identical product or homogeneous product? If answer is yes, that is perfectly competitive market. If answer is no, that means the product what the many sellers who are there in the market, uh, whatever product they are selling in the market, those mark uh, that those products are not homogeneous, rather differentiated, distinguished, but closely substitute to each other, then that market is called monopolistically competitive market. Monopolistically competitive. Monopolistic competitive. Okay. Look, this market has two elements, one monopoly element, one competitive element. Okay. What is monopoly element? Since the products are distinguished, let me give a one example, we have already given that example sometimes back, say, say suppose Indian market of bath soap, bath soap bath soap. However, so, you will see that a lot of varieties different companies are, produce, uh, are producing those product, even different comp one company may be uh, are producing different branded products right. Say um, Hindustan liver okay, they are producing say live boy okay, suppose okay, Hindustan liver uh, erstwhile it was Hindustan liver now I think it is Hindustan Unilever. Suppose one product is say live boy. B U O Y Live Boy. Okay. The Live Boy, even the Live Boy brand, brand name is called Live Boy, you will see that different type of products are there, right? One is say blue color, another is golden color, another is yellow color, like that. Okay. So uh, each of those products, you know what I am telling that only they are distinguished in color, you will see the smell, packaging, everything otherwise same. Okay. So that kind of thing. Other than Live Boy, Vivel, PRs. Okay, Dove, um, Park Avenue, so many varieties of product all are basically this bath soap okay, are available in that market, okay, bath soap market. Okay. Now, in which sense this market is monopoly? A producer who is producing live by soap, okay, he or she has the monopoly right over his product. Okay. Although this, this uh, live by soap is a close substitute to the another bath soap called say PRs. Okay. They are close substitute to each other, but they are distinguished. Okay. They are not homogeneous product. In, in, in economics, what is the definition of homogeneous product that we have discussed earlier? There should not be any dimension, whatever you can think of, any property, any characteristic, whatever you can think of, two products uh, should not be or should be identical in every possible dimensions. Okay. If at least one like this live boy, I am telling, all are same, same smell, every bar is weight, say maybe at 75 grams and so on, everything otherwise same. One bar is blue color, another bar is golden color. These two products are not identical or homogeneous product in economics, they are differentiated product. So, in that way, here you see that uh, live boy company, it has monopoly right over its own products. Okay may be different three, three, four different varieties of live boy product or live boy soap, okay. but it has monopoly right over all those three varieties of product. Okay. Similarly, PR's company, the company who is producing that PR's soap, right? so that company has the monopoly right over that product. 
monopoly light in the sense that he or she is the sole producer of Pierce product. No other product uh, producer is there who is producing peers in that market. In that way, every producer who are operating in that market, they are a monopolist because whatever product that producer is selling, no other producer is producing that product. In that way, they are monopolist. What is the competitive element in this market? Since the products are close substitute, although I am a monopolist. Okay, I am only producing PS product and nobody else is producing that product. I have to be very sensitive about the price what I am going to set. I am a monopolist, I am the price maker, but I can't set any price. My target is to maximize my profit. Okay, I can't set any price. I have to be very sensible or very sensitive about the similar product whatever is available in the market, right? What kind of price they are setting? If I said little bit more price, no, customers will quickly switch from my product to some other product. So many customers are there who are using peers, right? If under the satellite's paribas condition, I, if I increase my price little bit, say 1 rupee per bar, okay? Many customers, satellite's paribas condition means what? I am referring here, I am referring or we are, we are referring here that when I am increasing 1 rupee per bar of my product, no other uh, competitors who are producing the similar kind of product, right? they are not changing their price. right? So, definitely some customers will, will shift some of the other products unless the customers are very uh, brand sensitive, certain customers are there, certain uh, special type of customers are there, they are very brand sensitive. Like say, say there is a, there is a brand uh, called say, uh, one soap is called Dove. But soap only we are talking about Dove. Okay, it's a very soft kind of product, right? Uh, mostly girls like that. Okay, many girls like that product. Okay, exactly another product is there called Park Avenue. Park Avenue. Okay, S certain boys they like uh, very much this this product. Park Avenue, another brand. It's a bath soap they have. Okay, certain boys they like uh, this uh, this bath soap very much. Okay, so if you are very brand sensitive kind of thing, okay, so so I don't care much or that much about the price. I only want uh, dove uh, soap for my uh, bathing. Okay, similarly, uh, I don't I am not that much uh, that much price sensitive. I only want say Park, Park Avenue soap for my bath. Okay. So, that kind of very limited number of customers are there, those customers are not very uh, or proportion of those customers out of the total customers right in the market right are not that much okay, very, uh, very negligible kind of thing right. But overall in general larger section of the consumers right, they are very price sensitive. Okay, if little bit price, I increase little bit price of my product, right? Large number of customers may quickly switch from my product to some other products. So, what is the monopoly element we have discussed? Everybody has or everybody is a monopoly producer of the product he or she is producing. In that way, this market has some monopoly element. Competitive element in what? Although I have monopoly right over my own product, I have to be, I have to compete with the other producers who are producing not same product, but similar product, right. So, this market has both monopoly element as well as competitive element. So, a, as a result, I have to set my price of product or price for my product, okay. Of course, my target is to maximize my profit. Try to understand. So, so as a monopoly producer, my target is to maximize my profit. So, I will try to follow that MR equals to MC and uh, second order condition also slope of the MR should be less than slope of MC. So, what is my marginal cost curve? Okay, that may be different from the other producer. I am producing uh, PR soap, who is producing Dab soap, his or her marginal cost structure may be different from me. So, he or she will set his marginal cost to his marginal revenue curve. Okay? And this marginal revenue curve, marginal, marginal revenue curves are also different because my marginal revenue curve for my product and his marginal revenue curve for his product are different because the demand curve for my product and demand curve for his product are different. Certain people are there who are consumer of peers product. 
certain different people are there who are consumer of the DAP product and so on. Okay. So, I have to bother. So, given my cost structure, I have to bother, bother where is my average revenue curve or my demand curve or where is the consumer's demand curve for my product. If I know my demand curve, then I, I can easily derive what is my marginal revenue curve and then I can proceed to make marginal revenue curves to marginal cost and all those things right? to maximize my profit. Before try to understand suppose uh, how this demand curve of a monopolistically competitive market look like let us see. See suppose I am a monopoly okay, in that market. Okay. So, this kind of market demand curve is there okay, that is the average revenue line okay. and say suppose Hindustan Unilever say maybe 1970s or 1980s sometimes back when that Hindustan Unilever company was Hindustan Lever okay. and that time perhaps in the market not many varieties of this bath soap was available in India. Okay. Uh, uh, Mostly one, one uh, typical type of live boy soap was available suppose okay, this is the situation live boy and that, that bar kind of thing not oval kind of shape okay, that box kind of bar red color box kind of bar was available that is the original live boy that is also available these days but many people may not purchase that okay. all are different smell different varieties of live boy itself also is there beyond the other, other kind of different varieties or different brands right. So, suppose those days okay, this is the demand curve for the bath soap as well as since only one bath soap is available that is the demand curve for the live boy bath soap also okay, when only live boy was available and no other brands were available. Right. So, the Hindustan liver or the company who are producing that product that entire market demand curve he or he was enjoying. Okay. Now, suppose another producer enters into the market that producer is going to produce some bath soap, but is a new producer no, it is a different branded product say suppose Lux. Okay. So, what will happen? At this price level, earlier this much of quantity demanded was there for the bath soap, right? At this price, earlier this much of quantity demanded of that that bath soap was there, and entire quantity demanded were enjoyed by only live boy. Okay, this also were enjoyed by only live boy. Now, Lux enters into the market with their product Lux. Okay, what will happen? At different price level, alternative different price level, whatever we can think of the quantity demanded in the market, right? That should be shared by these two producers. Okay, because at if this is the price level, at that price level, this is the total market demand, right? And market demand for what? Bath soap, not the uh, one specific kind of product. So, that bath soap demand say suppose this is, this is a 1000 unit suppose 1000 unit suppose. So, that 1000 unit bath soap now has to be shared by both live boy and lux whether that will be shared equally or unequally that depends on that is a different question, but that has to be shared by both parties. Okay. Now, live boy producer if I think earlier the market demand curve was my sole demand curve or demand curve for my product only because Lux was not available. Now, Lux enters. So, where will be my demand curve now or where will be the demand curve for my product? Definitely demand curve will be somewhere left hand side. It should shift leftward. Why leftward? Because I will have this kind of demand curve for my product and another this kind of demand curve will be the Lux product and if I take those two horizontal sub summation, then this market demand curve will, will land because that same market demand curve is there that is the demand for entire market demand in the entire for the bath soap only understood. So, if we start with a monopoly kind of situation and as more and more producer are entering in the product market with similar product each of the individual producers demand curve or demand curve for each of the individual producers product okay, it should be shifting leftward leftward vis a vis the earlier demand curve. Suppose that Lux and Lifebuoy is there. 
Now suppose another company is entering who, who, who is going to produce the PRs. Okay. So, what will happen at this price if total this is the total market demand curve that has to be shared by three parties now. So, each of their individual demand curve if I talk about that must be shifting again leftward and if you take their three horizontal summation you will get this demand curve that is the market demand curve right. So, the message we are getting that as more and more producer will enter into the market with similar product each of the individual producers demand curve will shift leftward. So, that is one, one kind of effect. Another kind of effect is that as more and more pro producers are coming into inside the market, what will happen? Customer will be more and more price sensitive means because to me earlier only life boy was available. Now, after some time when Lux enters, I have two options. I can purchase live boy, I can purchase lux also. After some time when PR centers, I have three options. I can purchase any of those three like that. So, we are customers are becoming more and more price sensitive under the satellite peribus condition or given two other uh, varieties products, their price is same. If one product they increase their price, perhaps I will shift from this product to that product like that. Okay. So, individual demand curve not only shift leftward as uh, more and more producers are entering into the market with similar product, okay. the individual demand curves will be more and more flatter also relatively flatter okay. because more price sensitive means elasticity of demand from customer side will be more and more. Customers demand will be more and more elastic for a particular product or for a particular branded product. So, what we are hap what is happening? So, we are starting with this kind of this is the initial demand curve, this is the one another producer enters, this is the initial demand market demand curve, market demand curve as well as live boy when only live boy was there. When Lux enters, this is the live boys demand curve, but this is still the market demand curve. It becomes live boys or demand curve for the live boy product is this now, okay. And similarly, another demand curve is there for Lux product, okay. But this market demand curve remains the same because this is the market demand curve for the bath soap, not the live boy or not the PRs or not the Lux, something like that bath soap that is a specific kind of product every family needs okay, in that way. Okay. PR's producer enters this perhaps demand curve will shift this way. This will be shifting left and left and becoming more and more flatter. Another producer enters this kind. In that way limiting case on so many producers enters we can have this kind of demand curve whereas the competitive market we can reach competitive market demand curve is the horizontal you know right. So, this is the monopoly, this is the competitive competition demand curve under the monopoly, demand curve under the competitive market and in between these are basically we can think of more and more producers are entering into the market and each of the individual producers demand curve is shifting left or becoming flatter parallelly. Okay. So, in the monopolistically competitive market actually two externalities are there, okay. Though are there, it is there in your book. One externality is called product variety externality, product variety externality. Due to large number of products are there, more and more choice are available to the before the customers. Okay. So, customers enjoy some positive externality due to variety of different products are available in the market. Okay. This is called product variety externality, it is a positive externality to the customers. Okay. Another externality called business stealing externality, business stealing. externality. So, you can understand clearly as more and more producers are entering every every single producer's business is cut end. Initially, it was sole business of life boy. Once Lux enters, Lux actually stealing some business or market share for, from life boy and enjoying its demand. 
when peers enters, peers also stealing some market from live boy and some market for from uh, lux. So, as new producers are entering, he or she is stealing some of the market share of the existing producers. Okay. So, that is called business stealing externality. This externality is basically one negative externality to the producers. Product variety externality, it is a positive externality to the customers business stealing externality is a negative externality to the producers. As more and more producer enters each of the existing producers, existing producers sometimes called incumbent that terminology incumbent, incumbent means who are already there in the market. Okay. So, each of the incumbent producers, okay, their business will be or the new entrant will steal some of their business okay, to survive in the market. So, business stealing externality is a negative externality to the producers. This is the situation right. Now, so one particular producers what will be the his equilibrium? Okay, it is clear under the Saturday's Paribas condition we assume that uh, cost structure is same. Okay, so, suppose this is average total cost suppose we are discussing the short run case. So, average variable cost and this is the marginal cost, uh -huh, this should not touch here ok, uh, just ok. This is quantity right and it is a monopolistically competitive market one single producers equilibrium we are now discussing. Okay, this is his cost structure the, with the cost structure whatever he was operating when he was in a competitive market. When he was operating in a monopoly market whatever the cost structure same cost structure he has now he is operating in a monopolistically competitive market. The first question cost structure to we know what is his revenue structure whether his demand curve will be downward sloping or horizontal definitely downward sloping. Why downward sloping? As we have earlier diagram, we have then although as more and more producer will enter, those will shift leftward, but those will be downward sloping only. It will be more flat, relatively flat R, that is a different question, but those will be downward sloping only. But the question is why those will be downward sloping? Because I am the lux producer, right? And there is no customer who is uh, no producer who is producing lux soap, right? So, lux soap per se quote unquote that lux soap, I am the sole tiger, no other producers are there in the market, right. That is why, so suppose this is the demand curve for the lux soap. So, that is my demand curve, as a result this is my marginal revenue curve, okay, that is the demand curve. Suppose this is the demand curve, because demand curve will be downward sloping, right, because I am uh, the monopoly for the pro lux producer. Okay, so, as a result I will have some downward sloping demand curve like the monopoly market whatever the demand curve was there exactly. So, if this is the demand curve I will have this kind of marginal revenue curve and this is the MR equals to MC line. Okay. So, I will produce this much of output and I will set this much this much price per unit of output. As a result how much profit I will gain? because until that much of output this is the price and this is the average total cost. So, definitely that gap this box will be my profit. Okay. So, some existing producer is getting some positive profit right. This will do what? It will so, monopolistically competitive market has also free entry free exit kind of property. Okay. No restriction to the new entrant enter uh, new entrant to enter into the market, there is no restriction. Okay. If anyone is willing, they can enter. Okay. So, when this I am I am enjoying some positive profit, okay, it will attract some new entrant or potential entrant, okay. He or she will enter into the market. They are thinking that yeah, I can also do the similar business, I can produce some different some uh, this bath soap uh, product, right? And we with that I can also sell in the market right, similar kind of product I can enter into the market. As a result when new another entrant will enter what will happen? The demand curve for which I was generating this much of profit right, 
that demand curve also my demand curve that will also shift left hand side because one new entrant is entering into the market he will steal some of the existing all of the incumbents uh, producers uh, some uh, business right business stealing externality i am one of the incumbents so he will steal some of my business also Okay. So, as a result my demand curve will shift left one. So, suppose this will be my demand curve and as a result my counterpart my marginal revenue curve will be there and where is the margin my due to one new entrant my cost structure there will not be any effect on my cost structure. Cost structure as it is new entrants or new producers are entering or not they, 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 because my cost structure is different. Cost structure is determined by the technology using which a knowledge level using which I am producing that product and the factors of production what I am hiring from the factor markets. Okay. So, new producer enters that will affect my demand curve not my cost structure. So, cost curves will be as it is, okay. but my demand curve will shift left one new producer are entering. Accordingly, my marginal curve uh, marginal revenue curve will be different and I have to do M R equals to M C again to maximize my profit. First order condition M R equals to M C and second order condition I have to also uh, consider to maximize my profit. So, that is the way. So, so, so let me quickly finish in the short run or I can as a single producer I can have positive profit, I can have negative profit as well in the short run. Okay. But in the long run what will happen? Whenever this I am getting some positive profit new entrants are entering, when some of the incumbent producers are getting negative profit some of us some of the incumbent producer will go out depending on who cannot tolerate the kind of price or kind of negative profit he or she is getting right. So, they will go out. So, if some incumbent or some one of two of the incumbents are going out of the market right definitely each of the existing producers who are still st staying in the market after they. So, each of them will get some sort of business gain because two producers are going out okay. they will gain business gain because they will sell the same batch of kind of product same product right. So, my demand curve will shift right one and my marginal revenue curve will be uh, shifted accordingly. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, that mechanism will make sure that in the long run the equilibrium all of the existing uh, producers they should get 0 profit although the downward sloping demand curve is there. So, how that 0 profit we can make sure this is average total cost exactly equals to average variable cost look we are talking about long run. So, this is the thing okay. and suppose uh, this is the marginal cost line MC line okay. and so suppose this is the MR line. Okay. So, the producer he will do MR equals to MC here and second order condition also is satisfied here. So, this is this much, that much of quantity he will produce this will be price per unit of the quantity and his demand curve will give exactly will be tangent to the average total cost curve or average variable cost curve both are same here exactly vertically above this E point equilibrium point. So, when it is becoming tangent here what is that? What is the price that price is setting and for that quantity per unit average total cost is also that same. So, profit is 0. So, so in the long run a producer who is monopolist who is operating in a monopolistically competitive market his profit is 0. If that producer operates in a competitive market his case also profit is 0 if you can remember. Okay. But both 0 profit in the long run equilibrium, but what is the difference now, when he was operating in a competitive market his demand curve was going or becoming tangent this kind in the lowest point of the ATC curve. Okay. This lowest point of the ATC curve this point is called okay, perfectly so that is the lowest point of the ATC curve. So, perfectly economic, economic scale right because that is due to that much of quantity of output you your output will be or your production will be most economized per unit cost is minimum. Okay. So, this is called minimum efficient size minimum efficient size. So, minimum efficient size is what? That size of output 
that much size of output for which a producer is getting lowest average total cost that is called minimum efficient size. So, this is the minimum efficient size. So, in the competitive market a producer in the long run will get 0 profit and will operate at the minimum efficient point. In a monopolistically competitive market in the long run producer will get 0 profit, but producer will produce at the lower than minimum efficient size, he is producing until this much of output. Okay. So, that is why this thing is called excess capacity. What is excess capacity? I have some economic of scale kind of thing is there. If I produce the producer, no, who is operating here, if he produce further units, his per unit of quantity of output average cost will be falling and falling until this point. So, that is an economics, economies of scale region, no, economies of scale region, but he is not producing there, he is uh, because he is maximizing his or he is following the uh, monopoly behavior because he is a monopolist okay, in that for that product in the market. So, he is maximizing his profit and unfortunately that maximum profit is 0 in the long run and operating with uh, excess capacity. Excess capacity is basically the capacity at which he is operating and capacity at which with the minimum average cost he could operate gap in between is called excess capacity. So, in the long run a monopolistically competitive producer okay, will operate with excess capacity. In a, in a competitive producer in the long run will operate with the full capacity, full capacity means minimum efficient size in that way. Okay. That is the thing. Okay. So, and so, 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 one thing is quite clear that in monopolistically competitive market. Uh, okay, so, lot of varieties will be there in the market. So, as a result there is some advertising also is there in the in the market. You can see that all these different types of bath soap we are telling every almost every bath soap they give some sort of advertisement to attract the customers, but advertisement what they gain I am attracting for my product my rival is also attracting through advertisement uh, for his product. So, do this advertisement really do, uh, do any positive things to the society. So, in that question if we ask okay, there is two options are there advertisement what they will do through advertisement it has a benefit side. What is that benefit side? Through advertisement available of near say suppose new brand enters customers can be aware about that they oh, another variety is available in the market. So, that kind of knowledge gain customers can get okay, through advertisement information can be Given. But negative side is what? Through advertisement, advertisement sometimes can be misleading. What kind of things? Say, suppose you will see that say five friends they are enjoying each of, of them having some a specific kind of cold drinks glass, say maybe Coca Cola, okay, and they are they are they are smiling each of them as if that if you have Coca Cola, uh, you will get enjoyment or you will get some pleasant kind of moment so that you will smile. That is not the case. They are enjoying for some different occasion, maybe some birthday party they are enjoying. As a part of that, they are drinking some specific product, right? So, advertisement sometimes may be misleading also to the people or to the potential customer. So, advertisement both positive side is there, negative side is there. And in that way, whether advertisement is desirable or not from the societal point of view, we are not in a position to make a perfect conclusion yes or no kind of thing, right. It has both positive side as well as it has negative side. Not only that certain very good quality products no, advertisement uh, helps people to understand that it is a branded product, it is a very uh, good branded product like say uh, Voltas. I am sure many of you heard Voltas is an air condition company. So, there is a advertisement for that company they will get Voltas, there is a young girl, okay. she is telling Voltas a Tata product. So, Tata, Tata they have a brand value, okay. people lot of people lot of customers have some sort of faith on that their quality of their product, right. So, that is why they are utilizing that a Tata product. So, you 
keep faith on Voltas because it is a Tata product like that. Okay. Some brand value also people uh, or some companies they use advertisement to preserve their brand value. Okay, in that way, so that is also there. So, in your book, you just look at, but we are not in a position to make any comment that advertisement is good for society or bad for society. Both it has positive side, both it has negative side also. It may be misleading, okay, it, 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 it is simply an wastage of the revenues or resources, right, to attract the people, right. Of course, it creates some uh, information, new, new, new kind of products are available, people are coming to know, okay through that advertisement. So, let us stop here with this we complete the discussion of a producer uh, who is operating in a monopolistically competitive market right and what is his optimum production decision that we are doing profit maximizing decision, how much he should produce if in a short run, in a long run and everything we complete. So, next class we will discuss oligopoly market let us stop here.